can't see if anybody else has their hand. Go ahead, be bold. Okay, well, this is a real easy one. In a hundred words or yet or so, um, <laughs> what do you consider the major challenges facing the Protestant churches in the United States? I think um, that's not going to count as my two words. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, I think our biggest challenge is that we've lived within a cultural moment that seems like forever for us as Americans because we're a relatively new country, but is a blink of an eye for European countries and older cultures, right? Um, the last hundred years in which we've done church in a way where there were societal pressures to to be a part of the church and so that 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 meant that people could join the church and even go through like the motions of a church without actually having their lives transformed and i feel like i feel like the the call right now the church that will live and always be alive is one in which people take what we do seriously enough to be able to be joyful about ministry. Um, I, I mean, I take ministry really seriously, um, but because I take it seriously, there's a ability to laugh at our mistakes and also to be just authentic about this ch the challenge, the tensions that we face, the challenges that we face, rather than throwing up my hands and lamenting that, like um, authentic engagement as church in, in community leads to a lot of joy in life. <clears throat> and I think right now we're, we're seeing the end of a kind of church that is more about um, cultural acceptance than it is about living out the, the real thing. Churches that are doing that are doing great. Um, and sometimes churches that are not doing that are doing great, but they may not last forever. So that's, that's more than 100 words. <laughs> Jocelyn shared with our compromise an invitation to think about saints that might feel especially close to their heart as we're being confirmed on all saints, the feast of all saints. Yeah. I'm curious if there are saints who have been especially meaningful in your journey, or if you had to choose what your life at the end might be known for and celebrated in this communion of saints of which we believe we're all part. Um, what do you want those markers to be that people would feel inspired by or touched by that you that you want to check for in your faith? That's a great question. <clears throat> um, I mean, St. Francis, after being in Italy for 12 years, is kind of hard to, to miss, right? So is, this, so is Benedict, though. I mean, like, um, you know, there's a there's a way in which the living in Italy, like, you're, you're constantly between these different ways of incarnating, uh, well, sainthood, but really, I mean, just faithful, faithful church, right? And you see Claire, I mean, you see all sorts, Scholastica, I mean, there's all sorts of ways in which sainthood looks and uh, expresses itself. Um, I think the through line, though, is um, what I would want to be known for is someone who uh, helped others experience the love of God and Jesus Christ. Um, and that that encounter with the living God uh, changed the world for them. I mean, I, I believe that you know, Jesus makes all things right uh, and that there's a way in which we're, we get a chance to experience some of the fruits of eternity in the here and now when we live into that reality. But we'll know it fully, you know, as you know, Paul says you know, in 1 Corinthians, you know, now we see in the glass darkly, but now we'll see face to face uh, when the complete comes. I believe that that is already accomplished in, in Christ. It's just that we don't necessarily experience the fullness of it in this lifetime. But I think that that's where we're all going. And so um, my hope is that people will have, have more experience of that 
future reality than this.